In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use a coping saw. Hey guys, it's David here from David's DIY Reviews. On this channel, we do product reviews, testing, and how-to videos just like this one. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for more videos just like this. And stick around to the end of the video. I've got two bonus tips for you guys that are really going to help, especially if you're using a cheaper, low-end style coping saw. The first and maybe one of the most important things about using a coping saw is to have the blade tight. You pretty much want to tighten the handle as tight as you can get it. That's going to help when you're turning and making fine curved cuts. So when starting with a coping saw, you want to either have your thumb on top of the blade like this, or sometimes your finger like this, to get the blade started. So just like with any saw, you want to pull the saw back away from the direction the teeth are cut to start your cut. This is going to make it much easier to get the cut started. The next probably most important thing to know about a coping saw is to only make turns in your cut while the saw is moving. You can only really turn when you're moving the saw because otherwise the blade will bend and probably break. Another way to make turns in your wood if the turn is very sharp is you can just rotate the saw like this while you're sawing and that will make it pretty easy to do. One thing nice about the coping saws is that the blade is removable. What that means is that you can actually take the blade out and put it in either direction depending on your preference of whether you like to cut on the back stroke or whether you like to cut on the forward stroke. It's really up to you. Another good tip for you guys, if you're making a cut and while you're making the cut, the C of your saw is hitting either the wood or something else, you can actually rotate the blade within the saw to make it work better for you. Another great reason that coping saws have removable blades is so that you can cut out the inside of a piece of material. To do that, you simply drill a hole in your material, put the blade through the hole, reattach it, and then you can cut on the inside. Another thing that's really going to help is if you can hold the material you're cutting, that's going to keep the board a lot stiffer to put tension on it and help you make an easier cut. And also, as with most saws, the closer you can keep the cut you're making to your clamping device, the better it's going to be. It's going to keep the board more still and be easier to cut. And generally, coping saws are used for thinner pieces of wood. Really, only up to an inch is going to be suitable for a coping saw. My first bonus tip for you guys when using a coping saw, especially if it's a cheaper low-end coping saw, is that you can actually pull the C portion of the saw apart before you put the blade in it, and this will add some pre-tension and keep the blade a little bit tighter. My second tip for you guys also, if you're using a cheaper low-end coping saw, is that if you find that your handle is coming loose when you're using the saw, you can actually place a lock washer between the handle and the back part of the C, and when you clamp it down, it's gonna keep the handle really tight. And like with any hand saw, let the saw do the work. More than ever with a coping saw, because the blades are so small and breakable, you really don't wanna press hard on the saw, you wanna let the saw work for you. And if you guys happen to be looking for tips on how to use a hand saw, check out the card above. I've made a video specifically on tips and tricks on using a handsaw. It'll be really helpful. And like always guys, if you got value out of this video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. See you in the next video.